Hey there, nice to see you. Welcome back. Oh, hi. Sometimes I confuse you and my boom mic. And I'm not the only one. Your friends have mentioned this. You do have a striking resemblance to the Rode NT1A. So today we are going to be playing with what is quite possibly the strangest and one of the most unique synthesizers I've ever played with, the Erica Synth Centrix. I'd like to set the proper mindset and atmosphere before I get into this, because the Centrix was not made to be a competitor to similar products. It was made to be a unique laboratory for creating sounds. This is an analog tabletop synthesizer that doesn't have a sequencer, it doesn't have that many CV gate options, it doesn't have a key bed, and it retails for about $3,000. And that is why I'm pairing it with the Electron Machine Drum. Because back in the day, people would say, oh, this thing costs way too much money for something that doesn't have that much sample memory. It doesn't even have a USB port that could hook up to my computer. I'll just buy something else. Well, guess what? Now the Electron Machine Drum is worth three to four times its initial asking price. I'm absolutely not saying all of this to justify the price or to accelerate your gear acquisition syndrome. I'm just saying that there's a small handful of people who will find this perfect for what they're looking for in a synthesizer. And over the course of the next few decades, that small handful will slow grow and therefore the value may actually rise. So I'm just saying that if you're watching this with the mindset of why would I buy this when I could get an Ovation circuit that has more sounds or a Mother 32 that has more ins and outs, then you're kind of missing the point. There's a whole lot of Novation circuits and Mother 32s out there. There's not a whole lot of Centrixes out there. In fact, when I look at this, I can tell that the cornering was done by hand because it's a little bit imperfect. And for what it's worth, let's get into it. Let's play with it. It's a really fascinating machine. And let's roll the old intro. Roll it. Most of this video is just going to be jamming, and if you want to learn about every single feature that the Centrix has, then definitely look at the manual and check out Loop Pop's amazing video on it. But I'm just going to show you a quick overview of how this matrix works, because that, in my opinion, is the coolest part about it. So I'm going to press play on the machine drum here, and that's going to play a pattern. And then I'm going to connect the dots from the input to the output, right and left speaker. And then if you look, I could also connect it to the meter. Simple enough. Now I'm going to connect the input to the filter for both the right and left channel. And then I'm going to connect the filter to the left and right outputs. And now we're running the machine drum through an analog filter with very unique circuitry. Now I'm going to run input one and two into the oscillator frequency. The oscillator is going to go directly into the output. So now I'm going to run input one through the frequency of the first oscillator and input two through the frequency of the second oscillator. The first and second oscillator will then go into the filter. And then the third oscillator will control the filter frequency. <laughs> So the MIDI from the Arturia BeatStep Pro is going into the MIDI in of the Centrix and controlling the voltage or note of the oscillator. Then the MIDI through is going into the machine drum just so everything syncs up. And then with the same patch we had, we can create a sound like... All right, so I'm gonna disconnect the oscillator three from the filter since it doesn't really seem to be doing that much with all the other stuff going on. And instead I'm going to use the trapezoid, which is basically a loopable envelope generator. So here in the mod matrix, the trapezoid will be controlling the filter frequency. And if I switch this, it'll be loopable. By the way, the reason that it's called trapezoid is because the envelope shape looks like a trapeze. So if I flip that switch back to AD, I can trigger the trapezoid with MIDI. Also, just for the record, this is a bit strange. The only things that I have synced up between this BeatStep Pro and Machine Drum is the tempo. So I'm gonna manually have to press play on everything. And I have that on purpose because I wanna put a little swing here and I want things to trigger at different times so it just sounds messier and I guess more humanized.
All right, so let's patch the actual drum audio signal into the reverb and then into the output. All right, because we're in a room with three different cameras and microphones and a whole bunch of lights and a green screen, the reverb is extremely noisy. And the reason that it's noisy is because it's spring reverb, so it's naturally not shielded very well. And I'm going to give it a pass in this setting because this is not a studio setting, this is a video recording setting. However, the beautiful thing about a spring reverb is that the way that I have this set up, the only time that we're actually going to be able to hear the audio signal from the machine drum is when I punch the Centrix. <laughs> By the way, the feedback of the reverb when set up this way actually behaves as if it were the release of a VCA envelope. So I'm gonna turn it way up. Here we go. I haven't mentioned yet that this has stereo speakers, and they do sound quite good when you're working right over the unit like you normally would. I have mine a bit further out so it could be in the camera range, but yeah. Pretty cool. start from scratch and just make some crazy noise. Since starting this channel, one thing I've always tried to avoid was creating your synthesizer fart sound video. And I haven't edited this yet, obviously, but I may not have avoided it. It may have caught up to me. So when I first heard about the Centrix and read the specifications last year, I was really intrigued and I just wanted to get my hands on it and play with it. And Erica Synth has a really good manual. They have a whole bunch of diagrams for demo patches to learn how to figure out what's what. Loop Pop made an excellent video, but I kind of ignored all that because I wanted to experience it organically as possible. 
and I did that, and I'm really glad that I did. For the last three weeks or so, it has never entered my studio. It existed upstairs on my kitchen table, and every single meal that I ate, I played with the Centrix, and I had an absolute blast. And maybe that puts it into the expensive toy category. And yeah, $3,000 is a pretty expensive toy. For those of you who own drones, do you do search and rescue missions or professional real estate photography with them? So with all that being said, yes, it is missing a lot of features that other synthesizers, especially modular synthesizers, have. And that could be a bad or good thing depending on who you are. For me, I kind of enjoyed the puzzle of having to patch things a little bit differently inside this walled garden. Every single time I sit down with an empty patch and I have some sort of idea of what I want to end up with, but the limitations brute force me to be more creative in the way that I'm patching in the mod matrix, and then I end up way in left field, and I have all these new ways of patching that I'll end up bringing to other synthesizers, especially my modular. Oh, and by the way, I am a very musical and melodic person, and if you haven't noticed, I have not been able to make anything musical musical or pretty sounding on the Centrix. Everything has been experimental sounding, crazy sounding, evil sounding. That's not a bad thing at all. I kind of dig it. Every now and then you just got to open up those pearly gates and walk down to hell and stick your head in to see what's going on. Thank you to Perfect Circuit for sending it over. They are my favorite retailer for modular stuff, synths, and generally weird gear. And if you decide to sell one of your jet skis and buy this, you can get it in the link right there in the description. And hey, if you like this video or if you learned anything, subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell icon down there. And if there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. Speaking of links that are down there and probably floating around up here by this point, I have an awesome Patreon community if you want to join that community and get access to audio assets, unreleased music, exclusive coupon codes for hardware or software game servers, and an amazing Discord community. You can do so for as little as $1. All right, have a great day. Bye.